settled down. Abandoned property belongs to whoever finds it first, so it's legally yours now. Found your head. Right here. Go on, open it up. Show me what's inside. Right now. Hmm, that can't be right. Oh, but what if they're real after all? No, that can't be. Mm. But what if there's a chance? Greetings, miss! Is there something that's bothering you? Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm Della Roche, the representative of the Fontaine Fishing Association. How can I help you? Oh, so you're adventurers! Oh, finally, someone has heard my prayers. Paimon can tell you were really bothered by something. Don't worry, you've got two super experienced adventurers right here. We'll take care of anything and everything for you as long as you pay us a little bit of mora. 
Oh, you are exactly the helpers I need. See, the problem is that the fish around a fishing spot at Arrhenius have just all up and vanished recently. They disappeared too quickly for it to have been the work of human anglers. As the representative of the fishing association, I had planned to go and investigate the area right away. Ahem. <clears throat> Right, but unfortunately, as the representative of the Fishing Association, there are a few other errands that I absolutely have to run, so... So, you'd like us to investigate the spot for you? Exactly, you're right, Anamora. So, I thought I could delegate this work to you. Are you two some kind of prophets, knowing exactly what I was going to say like that? Or maybe like the oracles you read about in fairy tales. Yeah, we're just really experienced in this kind of thing, that's all. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll get a good night's sleep knowing the two of you are on the case. But don't we just need to investigate the missing fish? It really doesn't sound too difficult. No, you mustn't let your guard down. As the representative of the Fishing Association, I have good reason to believe that the fish have gone missing due to an encounter with the water imps. Yes, you're both outlanders, right? Our local fairy tales often speak of a terrifying underwater creature called Thelxi. The story our parents would tell us was always the same. If we went to the water alone, then we'd be snatched away and eaten by a water imp called Thelxi. A child eating water imp? Did they tell you what it looked like? My father would always describe it as a beautiful, multicolored snake woman, while my mother said it had a handsome face. It's really strange, though, because you'd also hear other people describe it as just a chubby penguin with a deceptive appearance. Even though the tales vary regarding its appearance, everyone agrees that it's really dangerous. It lives in an underwater cave surrounded by pallid bones and uses its sensitive nose to track down lonely children who've lost their way. And once it finds a child, it uses its alluring singing voice to lure them into the water before swallowing them all. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? Uh, sounds kind of scary. But isn't that pretty normal for a fairy tale? After all, those kinds of stories are usually made up to help keep children away from danger. But what if the fairy tale was inspired by a real-life tale? Just like how a water vein always has a source. Well, I wouldn't call it evidence, per se, but I've heard some rumors lately. They say that someone recently saw a child walk into the water as if he was possessed by something. Doesn't that sound just like he was responding to the call of a water imp? So you mean someone really got eaten by a water imp? It's all hearsay, so it's hard to confirm. But still, they all say this happened on Irenaeus. That's no laughing matter if you ask me. Both the Opera House and the Fountain of Lucene were built there, and the sources of many water veins can be traced to the island as well. Combine that with the mysterious mist, the huge tree with expansive underground roots, and the rumor that the fish chefs on the island can understand human language. Is it really so shocking that an island so shrouded in mystery could harbor a terrifying water imp as well? Oh, uh, why does Paimon feel like you're pulling our leg? You're just piling on the rumors now. Still, if someone's really been hurt, then we can't just ignore the situation, right, Traveler? Oh, marvelous. Then I'll just mark the stretch of water on your map. Don't forget that no matter what, safety always comes first.
one out, right here. Silence. Bow your head. I wasn't done. The tides beckon. Peaceful. Huh? Look, there are some footprints over there. These look pretty fresh. Oh, did the water imp get someone again? Let's look around and see if we can find anything else. Did you hear something just now? Ah! What is that? Don't come any closer! Paimon? Traveler? I'm sorry. I forgot I was still wearing this. Paimon, are you okay? Paimon <sighs> nearly mistook you for a water imp! Thank goodness it was just you wearing your helmet! Huh? A water imp? Thelxy, you say? How surprising. Huh? You know that name too? Or do you know someone else is trying to investigate the water imp? No. I think our situations are probably unrelated. Sure, if that's in order. I know the name because of one of my employers. She noticed the clockwork penguins I brought to the workshop and contacted me through the shop's owner. She has commissioned me to make a special toy. Following her request, I've named the toy Thelxy. Huh? But isn't a little creepy to name a toy after a water imp? Uh, wait, hold on! Revenue, you never take commissions from other people! Yeah, but, uh... She made a special request. But out of respect for her privacy... I can't really talk about it. 
It's all right, though. She'll be coming over to check on my progress shortly, and I'll just tell her that you're two of my trustworthy companions. Hearing that, she might be willing to share some information, and you'll be able to continue with your investigation. Huh. Even though you seem a little cold and reserved sometimes, you're still really considerate. Our target isn't necessarily the water imp, though. We're primarily here to investigate the disappearance of the fish. The fish? I think I may have connected the dots. These past few weeks, I've been taking Thelxy for underwater testing every day. The pressure testing makes a lot of noise. So, all that about the disappearing fish? Well, it was probably because of me. <laughs> so that's all it was? That actually makes a lot of sense. Wait, so could that mean the child we heard about who walked into the water was also... Yes, I think that's quite likely as well. Whew. So in the end, it was just Ravine! Pyron spent all this time imagining what a water imp from the fairy tales might look like, and it all turns out to be just a hoax. I'm sorry. It sounds like I've created a lot of trouble for everyone else as well. I'll try to finish this commission as soon as possible. Once I'm done, the fish should come back. Ah, uh, thanks for offering. But I can't trouble you any more than I already have. Hey, it's no trouble at all! Didn't you just call us your trustworthy companions? Companions are all about helping each other, you know? But... Don't you need to report back to your commissioner? These commissioner types all figured out, even though we were just tasked with finding out why the fish had gone missing. If we tell them now that it was all just a misunderstanding, you can bet they'd just immediately hand us another commission to help them get the fish back. Exactly! So if we can help you finish up your work and get the fish back, that would save us an extra trip! Um... Is that what you'd like to do as well? Huh. All right, I'll trust your judgment. Please, follow me. I've made a makeshift camp over there. I've stored Thelxy in the tent. He can respond to some simple verbal commands. You can try calling his name and see if he'll come over. version of Thelxy. It's also penguin-shaped, just like Pear! Yep. Had Thelxy lived in Penguin Town, he'd probably have become great friends with Pear. Uh, it's not really anywhere famous or important. Don't worry about it. Hey, Thelxy! Nice to meet you! Do you know how to say hello? I wanted to install a language output module, but due to time constraints, I had to give up on the idea. As it stands, Thelxy can only output messages that were pre-written into its motherboard. I haven't given him the ability to convert those messages into discernible words, so he can't really talk to us just yet. You want us to help you complete and install this language module, right? Uh, no, there's no need. That wasn't one of my employer's requests. It was just something I wanted to try. I have two other things I'd like your help with. 
The first is to do some integration testing on Thelxie's motherboard, to make sure he will be able to function properly in most situations. That doesn't sound too hard. And what's the other thing? The other shouldn't take too long either. You'll need to find Thelxie some colorful shells and coral, so I can craft a weapon for him. A weapon? Will Thelxie have to fight? Mm-hmm. Thelxie will need to be able to charge forward with a weapon in hand. Like that brave prince of legend. It's a part of my employer's request. What an imaginative employer! Naming Thelxie after a water imp? But wanting him to look like a prince? Well, regardless of his role or species, Thelxie's purpose is the same. Just like Pear, he has come to this world to serve as somebody's companion. Whoa, Thelxie just said something again! Could he understand what we were just talking about? He can react to certain key words, but unfortunately, due to the lack of a translation module, he still can't quite communicate with us. That's a pity. But anyway, the most important thing right now is for us to get to work. Maybe let's start by doing some testing on the... motherboard. That sounds like something we can do here in the camp. Sounds good. The motherboard is on my workbench, so please follow me. Ah, here we go. I have this testing manual, so feel free to reference it if you get stuck. Want to give it a try? It's okay if you don't succeed immediately. I've got a lot of backup boards just in case. Okay, knowing you, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Water comes in many flavors to the dessert. <sighs> You're doing well. Just as I expected. We've taken on a lot of similar tasks before, you know. Then let's move on to the underwater part. It's just as I mentioned earlier. We're after colorful shells and coral. Oh, speaking of which, you're both already pretty used to Fontaine's underwater environment, right? Okay, that's good. Just let me know if you ever feel uncomfortable. I'll make sure to stay right by your side.
should be right over there. We'll be able to find something that'll help us with our search. This is it. We call this thing an echoing conch. It can detect special reflection waves in the water to help us with all kinds of underwater exploration and excavation efforts. Here, try it. Did you notice any interesting places? The echoing conch should have detected some just now. Let's go check them out. should be enough. Let's head back to camp. Uh, thank you for staying out here with me all this time. you're back. I thought you might have been out diving. I'm sorry, Madame Destray. I must have kept you waiting. I can report, though, that the construction of Thelxi is going quite smoothly. There's no rush. I'm your employer, not your supervisor. And these two are... Oh, uh, they're two of my trustworthy companions. They're here to help me work on Thelxi. Yes, I see. 
I suppose it's only natural for someone responsible like you to have some reliable friends. It's really nice to meet you, Madam Distre. Are you Femini's employer? Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. Greetings, my new friends. Just call me Zoria. You are both so adorable. The sight of you reminds me of little fairies under a cottage roof. Oh, do you really think so? Of course. If my child had friends like you, then perhaps he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the tales of water imps. And I wouldn't have had to trouble Fremine here with this commission. Obsessed with the tales of water imps? Ah! Oh. So you don't know anything about my request yet? I would have thought Fremine had explained it to you already. Well, Fremine told us that it was a private matter, so he didn't want to just share it willy-nilly. I see. So Monsieur Fremine is even more discreet than I had thought. Hmm. As you are assisting him with the project, I believe it'll be beneficial for you to learn more about its vision and history. But it would be quite impolite of me to simply pile all of my troubles on you without your permission. So, would you like to listen to my story? Sure, you can tell us anything. You've already said nice things about us, so we'll try our best to help you get through your troubles. Ah, what a lovely little fairy. Then let me think of a way to put my situation into words. Hmm. I'm sure you're already familiar with the tale of the water imps, right? Simply put, parents came up with a story, painting water imps as scary abductors in an effort to convince their children to stay away from the water. My child is rather special, however. While most other children are terrified of Felxy, he's infatuated with him. In... infatuated? With a water imp? What a brave soul. Yes. He told me that he thought the water imp might have just been misunderstood. In his mind, instead of singing to abduct children, the water imp actually sang out of a longing for companionship. As a result, he often goes near the water in secret. Huh. So he wanted to become friends with the water imp so it wouldn't be lonely any longer? What a unique way of thinking. <laughs> Thank you, little Paimon. He indeed has always stood out from the crowd. He was actually diagnosed with loneliness syndrome when he was only eight years old. Mm-hmm. It's a type of mental disorder. Those affected by it often feel extremely lonely and lose interest in many mundane activities. The syndrome is probably what made him so determined to become friends with the water imp. Is it a very serious disorder? Hmm. If you were to become afflicted with the disorder, Paimon, you would only be able to say less than a fraction of the words you're saying to the Traveler now. No! Paimon won't accept that! We would have to find a doctor to help cure Paimon! Paimon has a 2,000 word quota for daily conversations with the Traveler and she won't settle for a single word less! The family doctor has already begun to treat my son. But since the disorder is rare, there aren't many good regimens for treatment. He has also developed some new symptoms lately, such as uncontrollable delusions. Huh? Uncontrollable what now? Uncontrollable delusions. To put it simply, he can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality, and spends all his time in his fantasy world. His fantasy world. It's a dream that he often mentioned to me when he was younger. I've compiled what I could understand of his recent rambling. It goes a bit like this.
Amazing. Your son came up with all of this? He really crafted a lovely fairy tale world for Thilxie. It's like a beautiful dream. But perhaps no beautiful dream can ever last long. You see, the story ended with a twist. How could the story end like this? Is that kind of fantasizing what caused your son to develop his loneliness syndrome? Well, it'd be more accurate to say that it was the syndrome that caused such terrible delusions to manifest. But in any case, the biggest problem is the patient eventually loses themselves to the fantasy world of their own creation. My poor child can no longer differentiate between imagination and reality. He's begun to see himself as Thelxy. Um, perhaps in his mind, the loneliness he felt became the same as that of a prince who lost everything he ever loved or stood for. What? So that's what you meant by uncontrollable delusions. Then we have to help him snap out of it. Alas, most of the time he acts as if he can no longer sense or interact with the real world at all. I've had several discussions with the doctor, and we think it is best to try to guide his fantasy. He once wanted to make a picture book of his imaginary world, but since the disorder progressed too quickly, he never quite got past the first page of the book. If we could use this book as a breakthrough for his condition. Here, you can take a look. Ah, so Zuri's son also saw Thelxi as a penguin. Oh, he looks so sad. What we should do now is help him complete this picture book. However, we'll lead the story to a different ending. One where the Water Imp Prince is eventually able to restore his kingdom with the help of his friends. We'll need to chase away his loneliness and sorrow, and let him perceive a world full of hope again. That's what I mean by guiding his fantasy. But if we just need to finish the picture book, why does Fremenay need to make a Thelxi as well? Because we need to treat the book's story seriously, as if it's a history of things that have really happened. We'll need to go on a journey like Thalxi and help him regain his crown and country. But my child can no longer go on a journey of his own. This is why I commissioned Fremenay here to craft a Thalxi, and then I'll paint the journey with this Thalxi into the picture book. Ah, like a stand-in for your son! Paimon's starting to get it now! Oh, you really put a lot of thought into this, Zuria. Um... Paimon still has one question, though. Where will we be able to find a Water Imp Kingdom? There are some ruins on the seabed of the Salacia Plains. I've already asked Fremenay to research them for me. We'll be able to use one of the ruins as the kingdom. Oh, so we'll just need to act out a performance of, uh... Oh, a brave journey through the Kingdom of Water Imps. As long as we chase away the monsters in the ruins, it'll count as chasing away the monsters in the Water Imp Kingdom, right? Sadly, no. We won't just be putting on a performance. It's just as Zuria said. We need to take this seriously. And the only way we can take this seriously is if we choose to believe everything that's happening is real. Uh, so we'll be playing it straight? Or, uh, making it a fully immersive experience? Oh, well, neither of those really sound right. Uh... We'll still be able to help, right? It's all right. There's no need to get that serious. It's not a big deal. I believe in my son. 
We can just see this as him wanting to stay asleep for a bit longer, because he's so enamored with his dream. <sighs> Zuria. Keep your spirits up, everyone. If we were to look troubled, my son is sure to become anxious as well. Hmm. I should be heading back right about now to check on my son. We temporarily moved to a place on the hill over there, so my son will have a better spot to convalesce. It's not far from the water, and there's also a great view. Feel free to come find me if anything urgent comes up. Understood. There's also one last thing. Since these two friends were able to help me out, I've made some more progress on Thelxi. I estimate that he should be ready sometime tomorrow. That's great news. I must thank you all. Hmm. With that in mind, how about we meet here in two days' time to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps? All right, everyone. Let's meet again in another two days. Zuria sure is a brave and optimistic lady. Fermine, do you think her plan will work out? Uh, let's discuss that over by the tent. There were a few things that I didn't bring up because the Madame was here. What is it, Fermine? What did you want to say? <clears throat> um, if you don't mind me asking, I would like the two of you to mentally prepare yourselves. <sighs> this is the first time that you've met anyone with the syndrome, right? I know you two are both really strong and will do everything you can to help the child. But with the syndrome being the way it is, if things don't... If things don't quite turn out as we wish, I hope you'll be able to accept the outcome and not put too much blame on yourselves. Fremine, why do you bring this up all of a sudden? Didn't we just promise Zuria that we'll be optimistic about everything working out? It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's just... Ah, so that's why you looked like you knew exactly what she was talking about. Wait, Fremine, don't tell Paimon that you also... No, no. Please don't misunderstand. I've never had it. I've just... I've just seen many cases of it at the House of the Hearth, back when we lived under the previous director. They say there are many factors surrounding the development of this illness. I've heard everything from hereditary factors and one state of mind, to environmental factors and even leyline disorder effects. Some even say it could be caused by contamination from god remains. And from the cases I've seen, 
there weren't many positive outcomes. In the worst cases, the patient could even... pass away. What? It could get that serious? Then your pylon thought they'd just stop talking as much. <sighs> yeah, that's just the nature of it. So, if you'll find it difficult to cope with the worst-case scenario, I would prefer that you back out right now. I don't want you to help only to feel like you failed. Yeah, that's right. Paimon's seen all of those things, too. No matter how hard it might get, we won't be scared. Really? <sighs> then in that case, let's see this real-life fantasy adventure together to the end. Question, if this illness can really be as bad as you've described, then do you really think Zuria's method will be able to help? After all, we'll just be using a toy as Delcy and some ruins as the Kingdom of Water Imps. The whole adventure will only be turned into a picture book for her son to read. Well, I think it should be able to do something. To harbor a fantasy means that the child wants to save himself somehow. The only reason he's allowed his dream kingdom to fall is because he's lost control of his heart. But if we can help him regain control and escape from the darkness, we'll be able to change his world. Like helping someone who's lost their voice be able to speak again. Oh, Paimon sees what you're saying now. Huh. How do you understand all of this so well, Fremine? Hmm. Well, maybe because I have also had many of my own dreams in the past. I even had my own fairy tale world, much like that boy's. I was able to draw a lot of support from it. So I believe in the power of fantasy worlds. Ah, so you remembered. Town. Why does a Paimon remember? Is that also a fairy tale world? Don't leave Paimon in the dark! Hey! Why did you put that on? <clears throat> it's just one of my personal quirks. Please pay it no mind. Anyway. Penguin Town is a peaceful place, with lots of penguin residents. They're all really good at making clockwork toys. And Pear is the town's triumphant hero, as well as the one who quietly protects the whole place. Pear? But didn't you make Pear yourself? Well... I often think that Pear only came to me because he realized how much I needed him. So it's not so much that I made Pear, as Pear chose me as his friend. Uh, Fremine, are you sure you're not losing control of your fantasies as well? No, I don't think so. I can still differentiate between fantasy and reality. I just believe that the fairy tale world of my dreams must also exist somewhere. It might just be hidden. Which is why it's difficult to see. Or it will only reveal itself at very specific times. Specific times? Like when you put on your diving helmet? Yeah. That's the general idea of it. Really? I would just said that because you put on your helmet. Have you ever observed the surface world from underwater? It's as if you're viewing a whole different world from the outside. It's a very surreal feeling, both alienating, but also as if you're being protected by something. I have a similar feeling when I put on my diving helmet. In those moments, it's possible to see some truly wondrous things, as if a fairy tale has become reality. It's almost like a sort of miracle. Really? Like a miracle? Well, if that's in order... Hey! Don't you still need to-
time to work on Thugsy's weapon. We don't want to keep you from finishing your commission. Right. I still have to collect some tools I'll need to craft the weapon. I've got to finish everything before tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Paimon. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for you to try my helmet. Thanks for all of your help. I'll be off for now. Let's meet up here again in two days.
value in my own work, but I also see the meaning in all the endeavors of the people of Fontaine. I believe I will con- Fulfilling my duties. Is your child feeling any better? Thank you for your concern, Fremine. His condition is fairly stable. The family doctor said we might be able to take him out for a stroll today. Zarya, Fremine, we're here! <laughs> Seems like everyone's arrived now. Not quite. Aren't we missing someone? But Paimon has a guess where he might be. Hey, Dad! Indeed. With his weapons in hand, Thalxy looks more formidable than ever. You've really outdone yourself, Remine. We helped you! Yes, you really had a good eye for materials. Everything you found was high quality. Speaking of which, Zuria just told me that she wants to end the adventure with the coronation ceremony. So, uh... Could I also trouble you with finding some materials for the crown? You can just keep an eye out for them on our way to the ruins. I was planning to collect the materials myself, but then I realized you might be able to find some prettier ones than what I could get my hands on. Seems like everything's ready to go. Shall we head out? Please wait a moment. I was just thinking. Since Thalxy has already shown us his brand new appearance, we may already be able to draw a new page in the picture book. What do you think? Ooh, Paimon's excited now! Hmm... Why don't we use the story we know as a reference? Just make the atmosphere a bit less grim. So we'll take out the sad parts and replace them with happier stuff? Sounds great to Paimon! Alright, I'll give it a try. I'm not very adept at drawing, but I've seen a lot of art during my work. Now, as far as the actual content of the drawing, please tell me what you'd like to see. Let me think... We can draw the weapon. The Prince has picked up the Sword of Courage and the Shield of Perseverance which proves he has crossed the mire of doubt and now is ready to wage war against the darkness. Okay, I'll add the weapons. Anything else? Paimo wants to give him some friends. thalxy has got some friends by his side now, so he's no longer fighting alone. Okay, I'll also draw some companions. Anything else? Yes, that's really important. The road in front of him now will no longer be just grayscale, but bursting with color and hope. Who would have thought the page could have become so inspiring? How wonderful! Splendid ideas, everyone! Great! Everyone looks super pumped up. Thalxy, most of all. 
Are you seeing this, my son? Are you feeling inspired by this as well? I'm sure he is, Zarya. And this is still just the first page. That's right! Paimon can't wait to see the picture book when it's all finished! We should finish it as soon as possible and keep up the belief and hope in our hearts! Mm-hmm. I'm starting to look forward to it as well. So let's get the show on the road and head towards the Kingdom of Water Imps. Yay! Sounds these fantastic adventures begin now! Materials that we can use for the crown, right? Let's get some for Fremine. These should be enough. I knew you'd have a knack for finding the best materials. We shouldn't need anything else to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps. Wow. Is that the entrance to the underwater ruins ahead? So these are the underwater ruins that Fremenet found. They're pretty amazing, but still not exactly the kind that Paimon was imagining. Oh, yeah, Paimon knows. It's just... <sighs> Paimon thought we'd actually see a fairy tale world. Like with the Water Imp's colorful houses and the Rainbow Bridge. I'm sorry. I was hoping to put up some decorations, but ran out of time to do it by myself. Whoa, someone's already switched into fantasy mode. Seems like the Traveler's already got the gist of things. You should do your best too, Paimon. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon! Paimon can flip the switch too! Now entering... Paimon Fantasy Mode! Ahem. <clears throat> Young adventurers, tis Paimon, guardian goddess of this land. State your goals and intentions for visiting this nation. Uh... We are the companions of Prince Thalxi, your Divine Highness. We have come to help him reclaim the glory that he has lost. Oh, reclaiming your glory? Thy goddess here has golden glory, silver glory, and bronze glory. Which is it that the prince has lost? Huh? <sighs> Not at all! This is the goddess's test! <clears throat> From your responses, the goddess has concluded that you're all brave adventurers without the taint of greed in your hearts. As such, you are worthy of everyone's respect. So please accept the goddess's reward. The goddess will now bestow all three types of glory upon you. And as for this prince, the goddess will also bestow upon you the rainbow glory. So your future will always be filled with light.
My gratitude to your Divine Highness for such generous blessings. Power is now surging through every part of my body. Uh, me... Me too. Is this the divine inspiration of legend? <laughs> Ahem. Now, adventurers, forge bravely ahead and defeat the monsters that have taken over the kingdom. You will be sure to find that which you seek. are back again. Your Highness, please show them what you're made of. Coming down to art. Surrender! <laughs> Here. We're under attack again. It's a Lawitro of the Deep. There's no need to fear, my friends. His Highness is so strong now that even a Divinature of the Deep would pose no threat to him. It should now be time for us to attend Thuxi's coronation ceremony. The only thing is, I didn't expect this to go so smoothly. I thought it would have taken longer for us to reach the heart of the ruins. It was my mistake. I should have told Fremenae earlier that we would also need a crown. It's all because the Traveler and Goddess Paimon were too strong! We just eradicated all the monsters in one go! It's okay, Zuria. We can come back again once I've made the crown. Then I must thank all of you again for taking the time. And you too, Thuxi, my child. Thuxi's turning out to be a real expert at fighting! I don't think there's anything that will be able to stop him. He's like a true prince now. Yes, I agree as well. Let's head back to camp for now. I asked the traveler to search for some materials on the way because I want to make the crown as soon as possible. We can add an update to Thuxi's fantastic adventures as well. Now that we've reclaimed the kingdom of water imps, it's time for us to draw some new scenes in the picture book. Zuria and Fremenae, why don't we draw the new pages first? Paimon really wants to update the picture book. Hey, you didn't have to see it out loud. <laughs> no problem, I'm happy to oblige. Then in that case, the story today should go something like this. After overcoming many obstacles, Prince Thelxie and his brave companions finally arrived at the entrance to the Kingdom of Water Imps. At this time, the little fairy in the group, Paimon, revealed her true goddess form to her companions. 
the goddess has arrived! She praised the companions for their purity, and to reward them, she bestowed upon them many blessings, and even prayed that the prince would be able to fulfill his goal. Bathed under the goddess's glory, the prince and his companions charged into the bastion of evil, chased away the monsters, and rescued the pretty water imps from their imprisonment. The prince finally managed to reclaim his kingdom, but as for the crown... Oh no, the crown isn't ready yet! No. The crown was within the prince's reach, but the monsters took it with them as they fled. They haven't given up and are sure to return, but the prince is certain to reclaim the crown the next time they fight. The brilliant rainbow shall descend onto the kingdom once more. Oh, and Paimon can almost see it all happening now! Whoa, the pages are beautiful! Surya is really talented at drawing! Thank you, everyone. We've also completed the second page of the picture book now. Thelxie's journey is one step closer to its end, and the promised coronation. My child, you'll also be able to brighten up when that time comes, right? I'm sure he will, Zuria. Who knows? Perhaps the doctor will already have some good news for you when you get back home today. I sure hope so, your Divine Highness. Oh, Remine, about the time you'll need for the crown. Please don't worry. One day should be more than enough. Ah, then I must thank you for your hard work. All right, let's rendezvous here in another two days' time for our final adventure, okay? And see you in two days, my lovely friends. Yeah, I'll need to go to the city shortly to get some parts for the base of the crown. I want to try out a few different designs and choose the one that looks the best. Yeah, Paimon knew that you didn't often take commissions from others, but Paimon had no idea you'd be so dedicated once you're on the job. Ah, uh, well, about that, it might be because... Because what? It's because... I hope... Uh, what's the matter? And what's with that look on your face? You're turning red! And it looks like you're about to run away and put your helmet on again! Uh, am I turning red? <laughs> alright, alright! We won't bother. Anymore for today, Fremine. Let's see each other in two days' time. Okay. Thank you. See you in two days. <sighs> I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves.
The tides beckon. Right now, emerge. Now you shall perish. Huh. Shine down. Huh. A process of elimination. <laughs> Illusion shattered. <laughs> right here. Emerge. <laughs>
feeling lucky nice today. Know your place. That's far enough. Behold. Bow your head. That's the following orders. Be sanctified. That's following orders. New punching bag. That's close to Come on out. Right here. Right now. Settle down. Let the mighty be humble. We're the eternal. You are not some target practice. Spread your wings and raise a star. You're in toast. Right here. Where do you think you're going? Be sanctified. Uh, 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 some target pack. Spread your wings and raise a storm! Your no. coming was for toes. I'm getting sick of this. Huh. Huh. The eternal oasis! Show them. Come on out, right now. Behold! You dare to gaze upon me? Finally, the target tactics. The time's beckoning. Red Derwood. Your coming was foretold. <clears throat> I'm getting sick. Right here, job. right now. That tingle? Odd, reveal thy... Stay put! Hey, no away! Settle down! Let the mighty be humble! on my part. The tides beckon to us. Don't have her! Don't get it! You know. My royal decree... Justice is blindsided. Sight of the tides beckon.
right here. Emerge. Settle down. Let the mighty be humble. Emerge. Right now. Settle down. <clears throat> Be sanctified. Right 
right here, right now. Settle down. The tide's beckoning. Cheers. Just waiting for Zuria now. She hasn't arrived yet. Then let's wait for her a little while. Or actually, maybe we can go find her. It's not too far from here anyway. Didn't she say she just lives on the hill over there? Hey, traveler, Paimon. Oh, and speaking of... Found you two at long last. Uh, I'm so glad that you both are all right. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Delaroche? What could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Thelxie, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Oh, that? We've got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just Fremine. Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. Oh, sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Huh? What, Fremine? Diving? No, 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 that's not what happened at all. I've heard a completely different account. What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. What could that be if not that water imp's work? Uh... Or... Uh, are you sure? One hundred percent sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesco. Lesco Destray. Wait, Lesco Destray? Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, his mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father passed away from an accident many years ago. Well, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine, and no one knows where she's gone. 
it, it, it can't be, right? Let's go Destre? Zuria Destre? It, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? I'm sorry, miss. We've got to go check on something right now. Oh, I see. Well, you go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. Another test subject. Let's settle down. The hunter becomes the hunted. Silence. Bow your head. Shit. Replace my hammer. The wrong test subject. Let the record show that I verbally consent to relinquishing these items into your possession.
the show begins. Silence! Abandoned property belongs to whoever finds it first, so it's legally yours now. unless you have anything urgent to report. This is the residence of Zuria Destree, and I am Jala Khan, her family doctor. What did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. No, you're right. Young Master Lesko did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the Young Master's no longer with us. And now, the Madame has come down with the same illness. Are you... her friends, by any chance? Oh... So, when she had requested time to go out over the past few days... It was so she could spend them with you. So, if I'm understanding this right... The one who's suffering from uncontrollable delusions is the madame herself? She believes her son is still alive? That is correct. When the young master... disappeared, she was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one last time. That might have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. But how could that be? She really looked like she had a handle on everything. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Then, all the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although, they were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. 
Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. She has been in a good mood the past few days, even humming a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well, until last night. She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind, and the words that he had inscribed onto it. Then she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives, and she's currently resting. Don't panic, Paimon. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. What should we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth and the children who lived in it. Those patients and what their doctors said back then. Hmm. Ah, uh, what if... Dr. Jalakon, have you seen a picture book? The Madame should have brought it back with her. Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Well, it's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. Yes, this is it. That's right. If what Dr. Jalakon said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... but wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and can no longer bring herself to face reality. Our first priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxie's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now, I think she might need it to save herself. And if we could complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. Melusines are beautiful creatures. They are the pride of Fontaine. Again, this is the final part of Thelxie's journey, but the most important person is missing. Everyone, please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us? If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. <sighs> You're right. Paimon needs to smile. If we have to give something to 
Azuria. It should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. And then she'll be able to recover, right, everyone? Yeah, I'm sure she will. I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends, and I'm already very late. But, Madame, you're still... Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelpsy. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, Madame. It's just... <sighs> Could you tell me the name of your child? Dr. Jalakan... How can you forget the name of your own patient? His name is Thalxi. He's the prince of the Kingdom of Water Imps. We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. I see. Madame, please rest assured, everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait, look, they've already returned. Everyone, have you really? Yes, but the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful, how wonderful! Thelxie, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. And the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. Right. The picture book. The picture book. But I don't know what I should put on the last page. Don't worry. Thelxi and his friends all know what she got. Get ready, Zuria. We'll describe everything for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> At last! his friends were able to drive off the final invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory. Their success was complete, and the recovered crown resplendent. The water imps, finally returning to their homes, showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them. They once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old. As he watched the scene unfold, the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. Moved by everyone's happiness, the prince stepped onto the Rainbow Bridge and took a good look at all the friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the Traveler, Goddess Paimon, Fremene, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. She walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. 
The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. That's the end of the story, Surya. Thank you. Thank you all. I am so sorry, my child. Maman should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? You'll never have to feel lonely again. <laughs> Mama loves you too. But what's happening? Is Zuria talking to Thelxie? Quick, put on my diving helmet. There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Thelxie's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Thelxie's saying. Mama, Mama loves you too. But I love you more, Mamo. What? Did you see something? Mamo, I'm getting a little sleepy. If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mamo will always hum for you. Thank you, Mamon. Your lullaby has always been my favorite. Now that I've heard it, I can return to my dream and to the kingdom of water imps in peace. <sighs> my poor darling. <laughs> Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love is... <laughs> greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps <laughs> i won't forget my mom and so is my love for you greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps good night my mom Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Faraday, why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it. Don't worry, it's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, she'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. Of course, Thelxie's fantastic adventures and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. That's wonderful! <sighs> so it wasn't bad news after all. Mm-hmm. Here, please take this picture book with you. The Madame wanted you to have it. If, at some point in the future, you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Is it really okay to give the book to us? Don't worry, 
It's just a copy. She still has the original. It's extremely important to her. All right, then there's no problem. <sighs> it feels good knowing we've contributed to something important. Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. <laughs> Paimon, do you know what the madame said? She said that at the moment when she placed the crown on Thelxie's head, she felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned, and he told her that he loved her. She also said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power, and she was filled with courage from head to toe. Really? But could that just be another part of her fantasy? Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? But, but what else could it be? A descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. You saw it too, didn't you? But that can't be what happened, right? There's just no way. Wouldn't it be like a miracle if that really happened? Yes, I suppose that would be a miracle. I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. Are you sure? You didn't have to do this for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 